So, what do you feel? What do you hear? Today, I'm going to be talking about one of the most interesting horror games of all time. Most of you have probably not played this, but for those who have, well, you know exactly what we're getting into. Now, the way I'm going to be talking about this game is going to be quite different from my other videos. I'm going to have to talk about everything in the game, including its story. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, you are free to click off right now. Oh, and by the way, the game is free, so I really think you should play it for yourself before you watch this video. But for right now, let's get in on to the game itself. First things first. What's this game about? Well, not much is known about the background of the game itself. From what we can gather, Irisu Syndrome is a freeware physics puzzle game created by Japanese developer Watsu, starring a cute bunny girl named Irisu Kyoko, I think. I'm really terrible with Japanese, I'm so sorry. So yeah, this sounds very interesting so far. Now, let's get into the actual game itself. Now, since I, I still don't know how to record on my computer, I'm going to be using someone else's gameplay. I really hope they don't mind. Link will be in the description. So first, before we launch the game, we have some important stuff in the game files, actually. We have data and replay, which are not important, just some data stuff. Next, we have Irisu, which is the game itself. We have a readme file, which is just some basic readme stuff, nothing too important. And then, as you can see, we have a photo. Huh, let's click on it. So, as you can see here, we have three kids here. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to tell you all their names. The boy on the left is named Edward Gawa. The girl in the middle is named Agiha. And the boy on the right is named Yuji. Huh, I think I got that one right. <laughs> Keep track of this photo because it will be important. Now, for the moment that you've all been waiting for, let's launch the game, shall we? Ah, this music right here hits right in the face. As we can see, we have the title, A Bunny Witch Girl Standing on the Left. Her name is Irisu, as you may have guessed. We have ranking, which is just where you keep track of all your scores. We have album, this is where you can unlock photos. But since we don't have any right now, we'll come back to it later. We have start, which is, well, to start the game. Duh. Let's give it a go, shall we? Whoa, what are we looking here? Where do I even start? Let me explain real quick. Level on the left goes up the more you play, making the game more difficult. There is also white boxes to keep the shapes from, well, going out of it, obviously. You also have a health bar and a score meter below, which health drains over time and the score meter goes up. The more points you get, well, it just goes higher. But keep a close watch on the scores, it's very important. And by that, I mean very important. It also tells you which track is playing below too, which you can change if you want by pressing the title on the main menu. Yeah, cool easter egg, right? And we have an interesting background with a lot of cats um, harming themselves in different ways. And vaguely, we can see Irisu just staring at us in the background. Very creepy. So, how do we play the game, obviously? Well, you use your mouse to click, which shoots these white blocks. If it hits a shape falling from above, the gravity will be lost from it, and after that, it will hit the ground. Your job is to make sure it hits the shape with the same color on the ground. For example, red hits red. If you are successful, your health bar will go up and you will get points. If you fail and the shape doesn't hit the shape as the same color, well, your health will go down and you'll get a game over. You can also hit other shapes by hitting one to get a combo of sorts. It's sort of to help increase the points as there are if, or if there are no shapes on the ground. That's it for gameplay. Now, let's see what happens if we lose.
whoa, that was freaky. She just slowly stares at you. But as we saw, we unlocked a new photo. To tell you the truth, you get the one after the end of each round, no matter what. We can view the photo we just got in the album. It seems to be the same kids we saw in the other photo in the files. Now on the beach? If you click on the photo, you'll get some text to go along with it. Let's read it out, shall we? Ah, the sun is good. Good day. Eh? So, about tonight's dinner. Ah, uh, I have no idea. That's too bad. Let me guess. It's tonight's dinner canned food. Are you still going on about it? Uh, it sucks. Wait, there's no way we can catch fish here. We can't eat canned food either. We have to cook for ourselves. I brought the ingredients after all. I wish our dinner was grilled seam bream. Shut up and help me cook. That's too much trouble. I need to draw more illustrations soon. I really can't even depend on you two for survival. <laughs> so yeah, it just seems to be normal kids on a trip. But if you can see in the background, two bunny ears, and we all know who that belongs to. You also may have saw that two files were added into the game folder. Yes, this game does do that. Let's take a look at Curtain Rise. Concept. On an island. The outbreak of a serial murder incident. The actors are three people. Edward Gara, his role is to disappear first. Yuji, his role is to disappear second while going to search for Edo. Irisu, her role is to remain until the very end. Huh? Actors? What is this, some sort of stage play? And the actors are all kids in the photo, like I mentioned. Well, whatever this play is, it's sort of messed up. Let's read the other one. A request. To everyone. Day one. Everyone is getting along for now. In the hopes that you don't show unnatural behaviour, I earnestly thank you. Don't show any unnatural behaviour? Just what is going on here? Whoever is doing this stage play doesn't want anything unnatural going on. Let's play more of the game and see what we can find out. And maybe try and get another photo. Ah, it seems we've got another photo this time. It looks like Edward Garvey is trying to scare the others. Let's read what it's saying. They say that which strange experiments. Huh, you'll cry. What's wrong? You really are bad with this sort of thing, aren't you? It's not that. I saw it just now. I saw some person with weird clothes. What do you mean? You know, like an apron dress. That kind of odd skirt and clothes. Wearing a hat like a witch's. With rabbit ears sprouting from it. A person like that was standing and looking at me. What's that? It's not like Edward Garwood's ghost story. It's a rabbit witch. I saw a figure in the distance. Uh, here. Someone beside us was here. It seemed like that person was watching intently, silently staring at us. Maybe you were just seeing things. No! She was a bit far, and she left quickly. But I definitely saw her, I'm sure. I wonder if I was saying things. So I felt bad and tried to forget it. I didn't want to say anything to anyone, but I really saw someone. We're all be materials for the wish experiment. Then, ah, stop it, stop it! <laughs> I'm sorry, it was too funny. Let's see. You'll forget about all this in the morning. So, he is talking about a scary bunny witch. That sounds very familiar, doesn't it? We also have a new text file called Tuedo. Let's read it out. We'll gradually begin from nightfall. Please appropriately make up some ghost stories, like we planned at our recent meeting. Incorporate what we talked about into your story. So, someone asked him to make up these stories as it's part of the plan. I think we can get a pretty good idea that Irisu is the one who's setting all this up, but why? Let's play some more. Hmm, it seems they're sitting alone with Edward Garland nowhere to be seen. Let's see what the photo says about this. Mmm, it's delicious. As expected, curry should be left overnight. 
What's wrong? Why in the gloomy face? Edward Garver hasn't come back yet. I'm sure he must have gone fishing again, but it's been hours since he woke up. Don't you think he's taking a lot too long? I said there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, I suppose so. So, it's all kind of called into plan. Edward Garver did go missing. Oh, and you remember the photo from the start I showed you? Let's check it out again. Oh, my God. He's blanked out. What happened to him? I don't know, but it seems something really terrible is going on here. Let's see what else we can find. Edward Gawakun, where are you? Huh? Ah, uh, uh, wh wh what is it? I think I heard a voice over there. Really? I didn't hear anything. Wait here, I'll go look. Ah, uh, wh wait, hey, be careful. It's fine, it's fine. I'll be back soon. So, it seems they are searching for him. But there is something more than just searching for him. We also have a new file called to Yuji. Let's read it. <clears throat> One person is erased. From around here, bit by bit, the climax is coming. Edo should secretly vanish in the dead of night. Yuji, please suggest go to search for them. Edo, disappear unnoticed when you find a chance to do so. So, is this part of the plan? What kind of messed up plan is this? Only one way to find out. Huh, she seems sad this time. I wonder why. Did something happen? Let's check out what the last photo says. Edward Gawakun Satoru? Where is everybody? So they're all gone. The only one here is Agiha. Who could have known what happened to the others? We also got a new text file named Irisu. This one should be important, perhaps? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just what is even happening here? We need to find out more. Next on the news, university students have gone missing. A single body has been discovered. Breaking news. A male body identified from the teeth Edward Gawa police still searching for whereabouts unknown What 
that was a news report regarding on what happened to everyone. They all met a tragic end. Some of them so brutally too that they could only enter to identify Edward Gall with his teeth. What did this happen? Why did this happen? This is just awful. Yep, they're all gone. Damn. So, if you may have guessed, that was the bad ending to the game. There is indeed a good ending. In order to get this ending, you need to get 20,000 score before the fourth round. And I did say the score was important. Nothing is different in the good ending route apart from Irisu's face not being sad near the end. Which hints at something going on, right? Oh, and the ending is different, of course. So, let's see this good ending, shall we? Where is everyone? We're the only two left. Where did everyone go? Huh? What is this? Photos? This is from our trip. Why is this here? There is something else here. Notes? Day one, everyone is getting along for now. In the hopes that you don't show unnatural behaviour, I earnestly thank you. Please appropriately make up some ghost stories. What is this? Hey, Kyoko. Hey, Kyoko, are you listening? The other two left us alone here. Where did they go? What's with this picture? What are these notes? Hey, answer me. Where did you go, Kyoko? Say something, Kyoko. I knew it. You're always watching Satara, what aren't you? You're always glancing at him in class. It was really obvious every time. And I saw you. You were peeking at Satara's notebook as you pleased. What were you thinking? You're not in elementary school. Smiling while looking at the notebook. Getting all excited over Satara's drawings. You know. I thought something was weird about this trip. You did it while I wasn't looking, didn't you? Why did you take Satara and Edward Galkun? They're somewhere, right? Where are they? Where have you gone, Kyoko? Irisu Kyoko! Kyoko? What's with that look? That was so cool. Literally the part where she walked on the desk up was just such an amazing part. So it, it does seem Irisu was behind everything. And she just comes up behind Aya and swings with her bat. Let's launch the game again and see what happens. Happy birthday.
Happy birthday to you. What are you doing sitting on the floor? Don't you think that's bad manners? Huh? Are you so happy you're about to cry? It's alright. It's alright. Happy birthday. Thanks. Ah, so it's just a prank for a birthday party this whole time. Cruel prank, if you ask me. The bat just turned out to be some red. And look, the photo is back to normal. Yay! Now you may be thinking, is that the end of the game? Well, you're in for a treat, because it's not. As you may have saw, we got a new text file called To Agaha. Let's read it out, shall we? What's with the strange person I saw in Edwigawa's ghost story? It seemed like they were in it on all along. I knew it. I think that it was too absurd. Yeah, really. Anyhow, what a tactless surprise party. Well, but they did work to an extent for my sake. That makes me a little happy. Incidentally, I saw some terrible things to Kyoko, huh? No, it didn't really seem like she was listening. Sorry. But... Really though, she has some strange points. She's not a bad girl. She's always coughing and her throat seems bad, so I can't help to worry about her. Next time, instead of something so lively, I want to go somewhere quiet with Sotoro. Speaking of Sotoro, he's still drawing those creepy pictures. Endlessly cutely drawn pictures of suicidal cats. Jeez, I really wish you'd stop that, sweat drop. I tried bugging him about it, but it seems like he doesn't care. I recently realised that he seems to be imitating the style of some foregun cartoonist called something or other. In that case, draw rabbits, like in the original, I said. This time around, it really seems to be suicidal rabbit. On the, this recent trip, he also seemed to bring a sketchbook. How much does he, do you love it? Well, since I'm a cat lover, it's better than cats. <laughs> Just kidding. Hmm, this seems to be after the party. We also find out who draws the cats in the background of the game. It's Yuji. It seems Agaha doesn't like this since she's sort of a cat person. She also said some mean stuff to Ir Irisu. I wonder what that was all about. Also, sometimes in the game menu it will change to some text. This is from Irisu's diary, but we don't need to read this now since we'll get the text file for it later. Now. There are some secrets in this game you may not have known of. If you get a score of 40,000, you'll unlock a secret mode. But if you get a score of 100,000, which is very hard to do, before you unlock the secret mode, you get a secret photo. Let's see what happens when you reach that score. Jeez, that is terrifying. Like, oh my god, the dev knew how to add scares in this game. As you may have saw, we got a new text file and a new photo. First, let's check out the other photo we had since the start of the game. Wait, what? Why is she drawn out? I thought this was all a prank. Does Irisu still hate her? 
What is going on? There seems to be more to this than we thought. Let's look at the other photo. Jeez, I can't even make out what's going on in this one. It's so disturbed. Just looking at it, it's horrible. Now, let's take a look at the new text file. Buckle up, because it's really a long one. Those two were talking again today. It's annoying. Noisy. Those two next to me are noisy. What in the world is so much fun? I wish everyone would just die. Today, my eyes met with a lone voice. He gave me a nod with a bit of an embarrassed smile. He was cute. Yuji Satoma Shukun. That was the kid with the cute smile. The gentle kid, who even gave a kind smile to someone like me. He was always alone. Just like me. One day, I peeked at Yuji Makan's notebook, and as a strange world was spread before me. Many pencil drawings, a cat cooking on an oven razor in the seal's room, a cat flying a kite in a thunderstorm. A cat killing itself slowly with tobacco smoke. A cat struck in the head by a falling bullet which had been shot straight up from a gun. Illustration and expression such hatred to cats were lined up. He's like me, a person with the same feelings. That time that our eyes met was fate. And since that day, Yuji Mankan and I have been together. These lectures are the one chance I have to be happy together with Yuji Me. We always sat four empty seats apart. Some way or another, it became like this. I love that I can feel him through this odd sense of distance. Recently, I've been referring to him as Yuji. Yuji? 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 Is this fate? Yuji and I met several times a week, sharing the same place and time. It's been so long since I felt this happy. Yes, not since the time I would pay with it in elementary school. The distance between us now is like the wire mesh from back then. I won't let anything rip through this mesh. I won't allow it. It won't happen this time. There's nobody to become between us. <laughs> Yuji won't be eaten up. By the way, I haven't talked to Yuji yet, but sometimes I write to meet. I wonder when the day that we will speak will come. The you from UJ is the you from Yuzuge. Recently, that girl has probably gotten too familiar with Yuji. That girl with a high-pitched voice like a cat. What is this? Lately, that annoying idiot and cat girl have been doing things with Yuji. What is this? I can hear them talking. The three of them are going on a trip. What is this? What is this? Leaving me alone? Taking Yuji along as you please? What do they think a person loved one is? <laughs> that thieving cat! <coughs> the coffin won't stop. <coughs> After all, that's happened. I finally understand what I need to do. Each one of them has to. The plan has been refined. Then, and I, us four will go on a trip to a remote area. I will. Akiha and Etwakawa. I will fully erase all evidence of my presence, hiding myself while I put all the strings behind the scenes of this trip. They will die a mysterious death and be disposed of, eventually forgotten. And Yuji will become mine, alone. It has a few gaps, but it's a nearly perfect plan. The largest handle is built enough for a relationship to travel with them. At the same time, when in the right to control the travel plans. Little by little, I'll feel the distance between us. I'm bad with this kind of thing though. I hate it. It's fine. I can do it if it's for Yuji's sake though. Exams, library, always to me those are laughing about not knowing anything to for his ethics test or something. I make an effort to modestly address them. Uh, um, the three have them stopped their conversation and looked over with puzzled expressions. 
this moment of being stared at is unbearable. Although, that's a pleasant feeling sticks in my chest. It's fine, I can do it if it's for Yuji's sake. I'll feel the distance between us, little by little. It was absent for the lecture. If it's fine with you, can I copy your note? This time, I suddenly went down the rabbit hole. It's mad, isn't it? Yes, it's mad. While smoking in the tub, I reach my notes. This is too ridiculous. A perfect crime? First of all, I was being strange at the time when I wrote the plan down. Erase the evidence? Stupid! Like I could do something like that. And I finally torn notes from a narrow round, larger tower on top of the drain. I stare fixedly as if to light a fire which would slowly spread into the blaze. Goodbye to the confused me of the past. Nevertheless, to go so far to always that strange surprise party. It might be better to evaluate myself. How dare I deceive everyone? Also, my weapon choice was good sense. A blackjack in the form of a durable sock implied stuff with rocks and soil. Not bad for a beautiful, compact weapon I can easily make anywhere. Breaking open the pack of messes and I smoothly pour the white granules into my mouth. I sense the cold sensation inside my mouth, spreading until it reaches my own brain. <sighs> I felt myself breathing a bit easier. The reason I can go through with it was just because of my feelings. I instantly destroy odd things in the cold, inhuman reality of the strange world on the back of my eyelids. It's a game I played my entire life, ever since my lonely childhood. As I play this game and claim my heart, my feelings of insecurity have somehow disappeared. Now, I want to thank such flickleness of mine of the bottom of my heart. I was crossed the point where I could no longer undo my mistakes. At this time, it was utterly strange. Firstly, there was no need to lure my loved one to the scene, and that stupid guy, he's an idiot, but harmless. So there's nothing to do about anything to him. The target is that cat. Her alone is good enough. Breaking open the packet of cough medicine, I smoothly pour the white garlands in my mouth. This makes 30 packets. Infinite and cornering fly around my William Drolagon and sympathetic nerves. In my hazy, drunken brain, thoughts spin and turn. Last time I was too interested in looking to entertain myself. This time my feelings will not waver. This time I'll cut a motion out of the Euclidean. I'll dodgely attempt to construct a flawless plan. And if I exceed, along with Yuji, our backs to the sunset will admire those beautiful drawings together. <laughs> Hmm, this seems to be the perspective of Izuru. She seems to really hate those two people. She also mentions a boy smiled at her today, who is then revealed to be Yuji. From the text file, it seems she likes him. So, she also saw Yujimi's notebook. This is really interesting. This is the one where she gets the feelings from him. Odd, if I do say so myself. Irisu claims they haven't talked yet, so we could assume from that that Irisu is a shy person. What strikes as interesting is that an other girl was talking to Yuji, who's similar to a cat, according to Irisu. It seems that thieving cat she is referring to is Agaha, and the why the cats are harming themselves it probably gave her the idea to do the same to Agaha. She also mentions that there's three of them going on a trip. Is that the party place? Just what is really going on here? I thought it was a prank. Does Izuru really want Agaha gone? And why, in one of the endings, all of them meet their end? I mean, she liked one of them! All it does say in the text is as it says there. What caused everyone to think to go wrong in the bad end? Why is she so messed up? I mean, there's still one thing we haven't checked out. Remember when I said we got 4,000 points, we would unlock a secret mode? Well, a little cat got added to the menu. If we click it, well... I remember a story from a while ago. A popular cat. The misery of a sad rabbit. And between it all, a lone girl. Why do I remember all this? That's surely...
everyone, this is Mutsu Mode. And with this, we're going to get more answers than questions. So what is Mitsu Mode? Mitsu Mode is a way more harder version of the main game. Instead of the shapes falling from the sky, they fall from below, making it much more harder. Still the same goal though. Everything is looking away instead of facing us this time, and the background is bunnies this time. Everything to time you get like a certain amount of points. In Mitsu, you unlock a cutscene which can be viewed as a note after you've unlocked it. Let's view the first one. A story from when I was in elementary school. There was a cat kept at a school. That cat was cute and friendly. It was truly everyone's favorite. One day, a rabbit came to live at the school. Somebody had picked it up in the schoolyard and had decided to keep it in the cage at the school. The rabbit looked miserable. It was wounded and ragged. It was missing an ear on one side and for some reason tend to avoid people. The rabbit wasn't well liked by the students, and so it was always alone. Ah, so a cat got popular and no one played with the rabbit. That was kind of familiar, doesn't it? To a certain someone we know. Let's see the next cutscene. The cat seemed to be enjoyed being surrounded by other people. On the other hand, not many people seemed to care about the rabbit. That's how it was treated. Well, children have a tendency to be cruel, but I came to feel sorry for the rabbit. Being careful that nobody would see me, I sometimes went to visit it. I was really relieved every time I saw the, ra the rabbit was alive and well. That cat and that rabbit would play with each other through the fence. I saw it many times. Although the favorite and the unpopular one were different, their relationship was good, right? At least, that's how I saw it. Ah, so it seems to show a boy is now talking to the rabbit. And I'm just gonna tell you who that boy is. It's Yuji. Yep, you heard me right. So, now we know it's Yuji, let's move on to the next cutscene. One day, when going to see the rabbit, there was a previous visitor. She was a girl, about the same age as me. The girl talked to the rabbit and she gave it food. My, it was a pleasant scene. The girl was always playing with the rabbit. She played with it for what seemed like forever. I watched it all from afar. From here are things I learned later. That girl was from a different class than me. That girl was allergic to cats. That girl was always alone. Ah, so a girl is now talking to it. And if you guess correctly, that is indeed Irisu. Let's see the next one. Watching the girl play with the rabbit from the shadows has become a daily routine for me. That lonely girl was always stuck in my heart. That's why, watching her play with the rabbit, I felt really relieved. However, we never talked to each other. I played with the cat as well. If I got too close to her, she might have a coughing fit. That's why I could only watch her from afar. Of course, I knew I was just making excuses. I simply didn't have the courage. So it seems Yuji has taken a liking to watch Izuru talk to the rabbit. Seems everything's going right. <laughs> I hope so. Attacked by a wild dog. That's what the teacher had said. Even though the cage had no gaps for a wild dog to slip through. The body of the rabbit whose head had been served had been found abandoned in the corner of a schoolyard. Long afterward, our parents told us the truth. Oh no, the teacher said that the rabbit was attacked by a wild dog. But is this true? Let's see the last cutscene. Before I noticed, the girl had stopped coming to school. The cat too disappeared. 
and all that remained in my heart were that wounded rabbit's sad last moments and that young girl. So it seems Iru stopped coming to school on that day. And wait, how would Yuji know about the rabbit's last moment? Was he there when it happened? Now, it's time to get the ending of Mitsu mode. Let's do this. Now, get ready! What ending was it that I wished for? I... I'm fine, just a little camera shy. I can't clearly remember now. What are you talking about? Quickly, now! My ideal happy ending was... Uh, but... but... Certainly, not this. Hurry up! But... Well... This is also fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, so it looked like everything did end happy for them, and they all became friends. And the photo is back to normal too. And it seems that Isra is now looking towards us, but she still seems a bit unhappy. Huh? What's this? A new text file. Let's read it. When I realized it. My notebook was filled with pictures of dying cats. Why did I draw cats? Let's think about yesterday. In class, I was drawn with all my might. A fire in a sealed room, lots of white pills, a loot rope. Whatever came to mind, I drew in my notebook, one after another. My usual claim in work. The more I become exposed to it, the more methods I can think of. The wide margins of my notebook are filled in with more and more pictures. The animal I like most is a cat. The group behind me talks happily. I took a test and that's what it told me. Among the group, Agaha Hatoro is the most cheerful. Cat? Cat. Hmm, did she say something about being a cat? Cats, 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 cats. Ah, that's right. While thinking such things, my hand was still drawing. I always sat in the middle row of, from the front. It's my own seat. I realized that the group behind me was discussing me. Of course, it was something negative. It's just that kind of thing. I started to like the photos of dying cats, so I continued to draw them. The people behind me are talking about me again. Sometimes they break out in laughter. They laugh like I'm some sort of entertainment. Even though I don't really care about it. Today, I complained to Edward Gawa Takura about their conversation. We ended up arguing about it. Edward Gawa Takura is really quite irritating, I thought. I blocked their following conversation from my brain. Therefore, I have no memories of it. By the way, Edward Gawa Takura seems to have feeling for Agaha Hitoro. He's very easy to read. Agaha Hatoro seems not to be aware of it. Recently, these two just seem to be often alone together. Incidentally, I got a good look at the girl. Somehow, she has a white sort of feeling about her. Always alone. The girl I mentioned before. Today, I met eyes with her. Not knowing what to do, I reflexively smiled back. The girl made a surprised expression and quickly looked away. I started to find the pictures of dying cats fun, so I continued to draw them. About the girl I mentioned before, apparently her name is Irasu Kyoko. Always alone. I watched her alone, always alone, from afar. Irasu Kyoko has a peek to my notebook, unbashedly. 
Nobody else was in the classroom. I left the notebook behind while using the restroom. When I came back, that kind of scene was spread before me. Reflexively, hidden hiding myself, I watched that Izuru Kuroko from the shadows. Looking at a person's notebook without permission? What a lovely girl. I wait a little while. I entered the classroom again. Irisu Kyoko sat quietly as if nothing had happened about Irisu Kyoko. However, I can express it, it's fine. I'm happy just watching her. I thought that I like to be killed by her. Lately, Irisu Kyoko has always been sitting near me. I have a feeling. I wonder if I'm thinking too much. By near, I mean that she's four empty seats away. I wonder if there's any meaning to this gap. I wish you'd sit closer to me. Coming back to my seat, I noticed someone had gone through my notebook. I wonder who was looking at it. Though, I wouldn't mind giving them another look. As it continued to happen, I began to understand. Whoever was happy to the open in my notebook, they left traces. They were on the pages with cats drawn on them. I started to draw more and more pictures of dying cats. Certainly, there was someone waiting for my pictures. To think that just because of that, my drawing would be this much more enjoyable. Drawing pictures of cats became a part of my everyday life. When it reached the point when I was making dedicated notebooks, you already seen ten. Sunny days are passionate, rainy days are triggered with melancholy, windy days are overflowed with poetry. I disperse cats' lives in various ways. That girl is my own secret watcher. I wonder if she's enjoying it. I haven't yet had any conversations with Iverizu Kyoko, but such things don't matter. We have a such dense communication between us. I want to keep a diary of this one sided exchange forever. By the way, there seems to be a fog in picture books with a similar style to my cat drawings. When I started drawing them, I didn't know. Moreover, the other one seems to be have a rabbit themed. Therefore, these notebooks are my own original works. There was a girl who was feeling ill in the corridor. The dizzy girl somehow reminded me of an anime cat. It was Agiha Hatoro. For the time being, I took her somewhere to rest. That was a mistake. In the classroom, Izukura sits four seats away. I was spending that pleasant time, like always, when the voice called me from behind. Edward Dagawa Takara, what does he want? Next to Edward Takara is a broadly smiling Agaha Hatoro. Edward Gawa says something or other. His voice is rather loud. It must be nice to talk so easily. I was thinking those things while listening. I don't really remember what he said. Somehow, though, I don't really understand why Edward Gawa, Takara, and Ageha Hitoro started sitting close to me in class. And somehow, though, I didn't really understand why we started having conversations. I didn't draw pictures of a cat. Ageha Hitoro is strangely imitant with me. Both physically and mentally. For example, she gets really close to me. At some point, she started calling me by my first name. When I speak, my voice has a gentle tone to it. I carefully choose my words to be meaningless. If I do this way, I seem to give off a feeling of being neither good nor bad. It seems that's though, say, I attract this kind of girl that likes this. With the appearance of this, these two, my chances to show Izuru Kyoko my notebook has sharply decreased. It's extremely troubling. Agatha Toro saw the cat pictures. Don't think that she looked at a person's notebook without permission. What is this? Agatha Toro acts like she's having a bit of fun on the inside. She's surely confused. I carefully thought through my reply. She realized I was a bit of a that sort of person. Would she stop trying to get close to me? If that happened, then I could show Izuru Kyoko my illustrations again. What shall I do to show her that I'm that sort of person? I respond to Agatha Toro. There's no particular meaning. Edward Gawa Takura and Agatha Toro's opinions of me didn't really change. Though, I didn't really understand why Edward Gawa Takura and Agatha Toro and I asked three are going on a trip. I noted an agreement to something Edward Gawa Toro was saying about the place being suitable as he seemed to leave it at that. I don't really remember what the place it was. The trip is over. Agahatera stuck close to me the entire time. 
Edward Gawa Takara seemed to play us more mind than usual, but I just didn't understand what the whole point was. Why did we purposely tire ourselves out? Doing nothing at home is much better. I got a photo of the trip from Agaha Tora. What surprised me was that in the pictures I looked happier than I expected. Those two started actively speak to me. I think it's strange. Why do I care so much about people? With I barely know. The hotter seasons eventually come around. It's a matter of time before they think it's strange for me to always be wearing long sleeves. It's nothing to small enough to hide a watch. And when those people realise it, I'll automatically be estranged from them. Until that time, I'll let them misunderstand. I join being with them. I can't find the photo from the trip. Where did I put it? I kept it between the pages of some notebook. Well, whatever. For the appearance of those two. My chance to show my notebook to Isaru Kyoko has almost disappeared. I want to connect with her somehow. What well, to distract my feeling self from these feelings. I consider reading Isaru Kyoko's notebook without permission. Irisu Kyoko's notebook was very interesting. She seems to have a nice written up plan. Irisu Kyoko seems to think that we're going out. I like that. But what impressed me the most was her strong love for Rabbit. She's a good, kind, animal-loving girl. It seems that she hates cats, and above all, it seems that Izuru Kyoko really looks forward to my notebooks. I'm very happy. Also, her writings were filled with bitterness towards Edward Gawatikura and Agaha Toro. This revelation about her fins for me made me very happy. Concerning Izuru Kyoko's plan, to summarise it's something like this. Irisu Kyoko, Agaha Takura, Ekaha Hatoro and I, four of us, go on a trip. She carries out her happy little plan, and she kills Edward Gawa Takora and Ageha Hatoro. This plot is absurd, but I can feel her good taste is in choosing the names of the real people. Library. Izuru Kyoko comes to the place where Edward Gawa Takora, Ageha Hatoro, and I were sitting together, though Izuru Kyoko was a bit nervous. Edward Gawa Takora and Ageha Hatoro treated her kindly. I was pretending to be caught, but I couldn't control my heartbeat. It wasn't only because this was the first time I heard her voice. I read about this development in her diary. The number of us sinned together increased to four. It was a bliss to be together with Irizu Kyoko. It's possible I wanted to be alone with her and ask all sorts of questions, but I didn't have the courage to suggest a thing. There's no doubt about it. The plan is Izuru Kyoko's notebook is tied to reality. Agaha Toro's birthday, a four-person trip, a secret surprise party. The events from Irihu Kyoko's plan, one by one, became reality. They are not decided by the leadership or prosecutors of Irisu Kyoko. Rather, Izuru Kyoko's reserved words skillfully and progressively controlled their ideas. Irisu Kyoko approaches in the library was the beginning of her plan. The real world will faithfully follow her plan's progression. I thought about it a bit. Suppose that plan was serious. What happens once it's completed? Irisu Kyoko and I will just be the two of us. In the case, there's nothing wrong about that. No, that's no good. The plan's no good, Irisu Kyoko. Let's say you succeed in killing two people. And let's say, through various other tricks, you erase the evidence that you had come with us on the trip. After that, what do I say to the police? I thought about some more. Is there no way for Izuru Kyoko to change her target to me? Izuru Kyoko killing me, that's an attractive happy ending. You could say it's my ideal. It would be perfect if Izuru Kyoko could go together with me. But I expect that's asking too much. Her plans for the trip are progressing steadily. Izuyoko Bunny costume was wonderful. Strangely, Agaha Hitora and I alone together. Agaha Hitora presently complains about my cat notebooks. I've been intimidating a fork and picture bonk. Yeah, I tried to convince her of that. I, in that case, draw rabbits like the original. I drew lots of pictures of dying rabbits. I drew lots of pictures of dying rabbits. I drew lots of pictures of dying rabbits. Agaha Tora gave me a truly great idea. Why didn't I realize sooner? Consider Izuyo Koho's love of rabbits isn't the answer clear. I drew pictures of rabbits in my notebook. If Izuyo Koho drew in a plan sees that notebook, what would Irisu Kyoko do to me? I'm excited just imagining it. I draw more and more pictures of rabbits dying. Well, I think to myself, in a rather indirect and roundabout method, I remember that rabbit picture books from somewhere. 
I look forward to the day of the trip and my happy ending. Three days until the trip. Two days until the trip. This is my final addition to the rabbit drawer and, incidentally, I remember a story from a while ago. My chest hurts, sharply, finally hurts. The trip is tomorrow. I'll sleep now. Yeah, the pages will be torn out. In a dream. Silently read. He was accusing me of something. I can't get that vision out of my mind. We're about to leave. I want to write about how I feel at this moment. About Egohara and Agahatora. They're idiots. Agahatora embraced me with affection. Agahatora led her to my side. If they knew the reason, I'd hide my wrists. I wonder what kind of reaction they'd have. Would they treat me the same way they've always done? They probably would, because they're idiots. Agahatora would become worried or angry like usual, even though she's aired enough to mistake tigers for cats. Eguka Takura, being incapable of distrusting someone else, he listened warmly regardless of what I say, and still be kind towards me. While I was thinking that, I thought that maybe getting Eguka Takura and Agaha Tora involved in my plan wasn't the best idea. I can't say there was a mistake for Agaha Tora to like me. Agaha Tora and Eguka Takura, however you look at it, the the better pairing. If our situation could be a bit different, wouldn't the four of us end up happily? Maybe. Just maybe. If by some means, Irohokuyama ends in a complete failure. I thought that just trying it wouldn't be so bad. I can fix the disordered ties between us. I can try and change the small world. And then finally, I can destroy my past. And if I succeed, then I can seek for a better future. Not something like that. With that, we're leaving. Hmm. If it's... If that's the case, isn't this trip unnecessary? Even now, I can start changing the world. For the sake of preventing Irizu Kyoko's plan, I should put some more reason or other to stop the trip. Too much trouble. Well, whatever. <laughs> so, this note seems to be from Yuji's perspective. It also seems that Yuji had feelings for Izuru, just like she had for him. And so it seemed, Yuji looked through Izuru's notebook and found out the plan to and Agaha on the island, but he wanted to be gone too because he thinks it would be romantic. <laughs> so he said he will plan to tell Izuru the truth on the island that will make us snap, and it has something to do with the photos we saw. But what was the, that truth? Well, there is one last secret in this game. If we get to level 100 in Missing Mood, which is the hardest challenge in this game, we will get the final text file. Let's do this. Aw, she seems to be smiling. That must mean things things are going well for her. And we get the final text file. Let's read it. Cutting off that rabbit's head with a saw is is a terrible deed. While listening to the sound of pouring rain, I get to work. Even though its body is, is so small, flesh and bones are expectantly tough. My hands have been covered with blood and fat and fluids I can't identify, making the grinding sound the blade progresses bit by bit. Before long, the rabbit's head is separated from its body. I leave just the rabbit's head on the ground. Silently, the rabbit feels like it's staring at me. Carrying the body of the rabbit, I left the cage. While being drenched by rain, I head for a corner of the schoolyard. I hid the rabbit's body in a bush in the corner to the wash basin, clean my hands and then the saw. Carefully, every nook and cranny, carefully to leave no trace. Carefully, carefully. At that point, I opened my eyes. It's been a long time since I've seen that dream. Early that morning, I went to see how the rabbit was. I chose a time when I would not get interrupted at the girl's visit. When I looked for the cage, the rabbit was dead. Dead as it was sleeping. As if it got tired of living. What will come of this rabbit's death? I imagined the future. An empty cage. The rabbit and life and death are gone. The girl once again completely alone. The future is no good. I felt that way. The key to the cage. In the locker in the corner of the schoolyard. That moment, I remember it. I ran with all my strength in order to change the future by any means necessary without noticing rain began to pour down. While running breathlessly at full speed, various force run from my head. There are rabbits that silently vanished without anyone noticing. I wanted someone to hold its memory in their heart. Even if only in memories, I want them to feel sorry for it. If in whatever form the rabbit becomes a topic of conversation, the girl who often took care of the rabbit would be able to talk with everyone. That would surely have a chance for her to fit in. Various things thoughts run through my head. Were well, my actions right? After that, talk about the rabbits certainly increased. That's scary. We should be careful. That's all they said. The truth 
conversation was the lost cat. A few days later, the cat came back to the school. Everyone was very pleased. As a rabbit, everyone had already forgotten about it. What happened to the girl? I never knew. As a rabbit died, nobody ever saw her again. Were my actions right? In the end, I can change the future. If nobody else, at least I kept those scarred rabbit deeply carved into myself. Oh my. So the truth is, Yuji was the one who ended the rabbit. So that definitely would make Izuru snap because she loved the rabbit. So we now have everything unlocked. I'm going to explain the whole story in case you haven't pieced it together. So one day there was this cat and bunny in the school. The cat was more popular than the bunny, but a girl named Izuru would play with it. And a boy named Yuji would watch her play with it. He took a liking to Izuru, so that the, that was good. But the rabbit was suffering, so Yuji thought instead of it suffering, he would put it out of his misery. After that, Izuru saw the body of the rabbit, and it traumatized her, causing her to never come back to the school. The teachers framed it on the dog, and what happened. A few years later in university, Izuru comes back to school, a bit shy and awkward, and Yuji notices this. He would always give Izuru a smile every time he walked past her. Izuru starts taking a liking to Yuji, and looks through his notebook, and finds drawing of cats ending themselves in various ways. This causes Izuru to fall instantly in love with Yuji, and Yuji notices that she is going through her notebook, but he doesn't mind it. The reason Izuru looks you, you, at Yuji is because of this, it reminds her of the cat. That stole the property of the poorly treated rabbit, kind of like Izuru. One day, Yuji helps a girl named Agaha, and that makes Agaha fall in love with Yuji, but Yuji really loves Izuru. So, they are friends for now. Another friend joins them named Agaha. The reason he is here is because he's following Agaha around, because he really loves Agaha. So, Iruva soon notices that Yuji is talking to Agaha and gets really angry and calls her a cat, like how the cat stole the popularity of the rabbit, which is also ironic since Agatha really loves cats. One day she hears them talking about a trip for Agatha's birthday and comes up with a plan to egg her and Agatha on the trip while intending to kill the others in a bunny witch outfit. So she makes the plan with Edward Gara and secretly kills Agatha on the trip. She writes this down and on her notebook and Yuji peeks at the notebook and finds out the plan. He thinks it'll be romantic to be killed by her, so he comes up with a plan to tell her the truth about what happened to the rabbit, which would cause Izuru to go on a rampage. Now, they go on the island, and this is where the gameplay comes into play, the shape game. It really means keeping Izuru's sanity in check. If you lose her sanity, it's going down, but if you're winning, it stays up. Now, this is where the onions come into play. As Izuru loses her sanity, and Yuji tells her about the truth, she goes on a rampage, killing everyone. But in the good ending, her sanity is unchecked, and she doesn't go on a rampage and forgives Yuji. In fact, she does not even kill Agatha, so that's good. After the events of the birthday party, Misu mode came, comes in, check where we have to keep Izuru's sanity in check one last time, because she still hates Agatha. After all that, they remain friends. It seems Izuru and Yuji get together, as shown by her happy face in the menu screen of Mitsu mode, and Edwiga and Agatha get together at the end, because it's kind of hinted at that. And they all live happily ever after. The end. So yeah, that was Irisu Syndrome. In my opinion, this game has really great scares. And the way the story is told is very interesting to follow. So yeah, pretty good, I think. The game is kind of challenging as well. you got all like the puzzle segments, which are pretty fun and addictive. Overall, I think it's a really good game with like... Especially like the fourth wall break where she walks on the desktop. It's just like, you don't see many games do stuff like that. And it's sad because this game doesn't have much popularity. Like if you look it up on YouTube, only a few people played it. And I really hope this like spreads the awareness that Izuru Syndrome is a thing that exists. So yeah. As for closing remarks, I want to thank you for watching all of, for all of this. This was like kind of my first big review. Still trying to get the hang of things on how to review stuff. I was a little bit wonky on the Japanese names, but I think I started to get a hang of it. It was like just kind of weird to read through it all. I hope you like the little voices I gave to the characters as well. It's kind of hard to do. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, so. Hey, 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 so, so. Thanks for watching that. I am. Um, I'm really happy about how it turned out. And yeah, uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more review videos from me might do more in the future i don't know and yeah
Thank you for watching and have a good day.